I'm Broadway.com. Hello, I'm here with Andrew Keenan Bolger from Broadway's Newsies. And I'm here with Celia Keenan Bolger of Broadway's Peter and the Star Catcher. And we're here to answer some questions. From you guys. Let's I'll start. Right I'm okay. the oldest. <laughs> this is from Nicole. Um, which of Celia's roles is your favorite? Which would you like to play in a gender-bending performance? Oh, oh, oh. Um, my favorite of Celia's roles. I, I think actually the answer to this question is one and the same. I would have to choose Mary and Merrily We Roll Along. <laughs> I don't know, I just really like to cut my teeth on some boozy, <laughs> it's jaded fun in alcoholic. There. Yes, you get to play a 40 year old, a drunk, yes. you would be good at all of those things. I think that was also the furthest away from the Celia that I knew and loved. So it was really, it was a kind of transformative performance that I really liked seeing. I like that. <laughs> okay, and now I read one. Yep. We've got one from Eva. Eva, if you could star opposite Andrew in any musical or play, what would it be and why? Ooh, well, I feel like we've talked about this a little yeah. bit. I do think The Old Chestnut, John and Jen, written by Andrew Lippa, yeah. would be a really fun one to do, particularly because it's about brother and sister, and also we were obsessed with that musical yeah. when we were way too young to be playing those roles. <laughs> yes, I'm gonna go with that. Well, I would Jen. also venture to say maybe a, a secret garden. Martha yes. Dickens, their brother sister. That's a good one. That might be even better than John and Jen. Less heavy lifting. <laughs> yes, more accent. Yeah. <laughs> good, okay. This is from Carly. What was the worst mistake you ever made on stage or at an audition? Uh, uh, I had an audition for a high school musical, the national tour. And, and, story. Well, and I just, I didn't know it was supposed to be a dance call. And I am not a dancer, so I would never have let myself be submitted for it. But I and who are you up. auditioning for? Um, I, who, oh, I was auditioning director. for Jeff Calhoun, director, director of, of Newsies. Newsies. This is the first time he had ever seen me perform. And I came late to the audition because my flight was delayed. I was an hour late, and it was a basketball number. So if there's one thing I'm worse at than dancing, it's definitely dribbling. And I didn't have time to learn the combination, and it was a disaster and so they started they put me in a group and I was like I don't know this so instead of doing the dance I just like put the basketball under my shirt and pretend to be a pregnant woman <laughs> I was like give me a pickle <laughs> and did you get that job <laughs> no I did not get that job did you get cast as crutchy and newsies <laughs> later directed by Jeff Calhoun yes but I think at my first audition he was like I don't know about this one <laughs> he's a loose cannon that boy so that was a nightmare, Ooh, I would have to say. That's a good one. Um, from Matt, I really admire how hard you work to achieve equality. What inspired you to be a political activist? Um, I feel like we just grew up around it. Mm -hmm. I, it's so funny, somebody just texted me, or over Twitter, like sent me a message that was like, can I bring my teenage daughter to the Broadway for Obama phone bank happening on Monday, October 29th from 6.30 to 8.30? Um, and they were like, I wanna get her involved. And I wrote back, I was like, you know, we were dragged to so many like Labor Day parades and protests and when we were so young that mm -hmm. I feel like it makes it a lot easier than as an adult to sort of become involved. So I think really in a lot of ways it's due to our parents. Absolutely. This is from Emma. What is your favorite SIP you've gotten so far? Oh, amazing. There's well, so many. For SIP, for people who don't know, it stands for Saturday Intermission Pick, which is something that I started with my friend Max Von Essen of Avita, and it's all the casts on Broadway. Snap a pic at intermission and post it on Twitter. Um, my favorite one that I've done, that we <laughs> actually got in a lot of trouble for this one, I convinced all of our boys to go up on the roof that is, I, of our theater. That is a really good one. Already bad idea and then lay down and spell out hashtag SIP with our bodies. So there's definitely a note on the call board when we came and they were like, the wardrobe we is know like, about what it. What happened <laughs> Why to were you shirts? lying on a tar roof? <laughs> yeah, that is so a really good one. That was a fun one, but. Do I you have a, a favorite one from the one that someone sent you? Oh yeah. Um, I just love during the Olympics, like all yes. the past, They yes. got creative. Just a lot of people doing like synchronized swimming or like, <laughs> women's weightlifting, just really funny events that people were recreating backstage. So good. All right. Uh, from Kyla, who was the biggest attention hog in your family when you were growing up? Oof. <laughs> <laughs> 
it's it's a tie. I feel like Maggie was always like, I'm gonna lay this one just back. Just peacemaker. I'm gonna just try to let these fools wear themselves out. I feel like it was a different time type of attention horror. Yeah. I was the boy, but you were the old like diva sister. So bossy. So bossy. <laughs> In a way that I was willing to like jump off a cliff for it though, so it doesn't yes. really matter. I was willingly accepting your authority. Mm -hmm. All right, this is from Sarah. How do you spend your time during the majority of Act Two when you're not on stage? By the way, I saw the show and loved it. Oh well, thank you, Thanks, Sarah. Thanks, Sarah. Um, I spend Act Two usually working on whatever kind of editing project that I've got going on, whether that be like making Newsies backstage videos or uh, submissions, submissions only. only, my web series, or just random videos with my friends. But it's great. I have like a little midtown office, a little editing suite. It's so nice that the last two shows you've done, you I have know. like a, a lot of backstage significant time. time off stage where you can do all of the other things that you do. That's Yeah, lucky. showcation I call that. Yes, so good. All right, from Michael. Since you and Gavin Creel are ex-roommates, does he have any messing or annoying habits? Or is he as perfect in life as he is on stage? Ooh, I mean, he, Gavin is, I feel like, especially as a roommate, mm -hmm. it does not get much better than Gavin. Gavin is also living in our house in Los Angeles in, um, while he's doing Book of Mormon, and he keeps texting me pictures where he's like, I just saw this dish rack and picked it up for your house. And I was like, oh, well, this is delightful. And he was like, I also saw some vintage chairs that I'm gonna put on your deck. So he's amazing. The only thing I would say about Gavin, the gas. Oh. I'm gonna leave it at that. All right. Sure, sure. I think he would back me up on that too. Okay, yeah. And now with Wally, it's like, well, wow. That's even better, he can just blame it on Wally. Yeah, I dog. know the difference. <laughs> From Francesca, if you had to choose, would you rather give up Twitter or YouTube? Oh God, oh. Um, mm. I would have to say Twitter just because I've been there a shorter amount of time. I, I agree. think YouTube is like the greatest platform to ever happen as far as social media goes because especially being an artist, like if you wanted to produce something of your own, you could do like a cabaret in New York and maybe 100 people would see it and it was like one night only. And I think YouTube changed that entire way of exposing yourself as an artist where you can throw it up there and if it's of quality, it, there's no limit to who can see it. Yeah, it also has this sort of nostalgic mm -hmm. effect where you can see things that you sort of never thought you would get to see again, yeah, but absolutely. that it show up. Yeah, YouTube. definitely some bootlegs from, there's some great bootlegs of Celia up there that I'm like, I'm so glad I have them oh, now. No. Forever. From Martha, uh, who would win in an awesome Broadway sibling duel? The Keenan Bulgers or Sutton and Hunter Foster? We gotta be clear about <laughs> what we're doing. <laughs> yes. If it is it was, hide and seek? Or we would is win. Is it a race? <laughs> they would win in a race. We would win in hide and seek. From Allison. What was it like being in Susical? Do you have a favorite number from the show? Will you sing a little of it? Oh God! Um, I love doing Susical. I we were definitely raised on Dr. Seuss books. They have like a really great message to it and. We're very like highly literate for being such like simple language. Um, so it was really cool to see that kind of get put together. My favorite number, um, I loved Alone in the Universe. I think that's one of Aaron's and Flaherty's most beautiful songs. Can I sing some of it? I mean. Of you can, little one. <laughs> Do you want to sing it with me, Sarah? <clears throat> I'm alone in the universe. So Yep, that's what I you get. And it's in your head as well as I thought I did. <laughs> oh, me. From Danielle. Being the only female cast member in Peter and the Starcatcher, are you more like the mama bear or the little sister of the cast? It goes both ways, but I would say probably more mama bear, though once in a while I will get some good um, whenever people want to like throw around some punches, or carry somebody. <laughs> I get that ends up being me. But generally I would say, it's so nice, like once a week, twice a week, one of those guys comes into my dressing room and is like, so like, I'm kind of dating this girl, and I'm like, yes, tell me everything. <laughs> tell me everything. Because girls like to talk about those things. Yes, yes. 
That's awesome. Sisters and mothers. <laughs> um, this is from Jeremy. Do you ever accidentally slip into the crutchy walk outside of the show? <laughs> I do when I am <laughs> injured my foot. <laughs> Um, After the 5K run. Yeah, yikes. It was actually interesting during, I was rehearsing for Newsies at the same time that I was performing Mary Poppins at night. And so it was two different accents and two just very different like characters. So I never, I never slipped into crutchy, but there were times where I definitely said some lines where I was like, was it Brooklyn? Was it Cockney? No one knows. So very tricky, but I have not, luckily when I'm out of the theater, I've, Leave pretty that, happy leave to that not, limp behind. Yeah, not walking like that, for sure. I'm grateful for that. Yes, me too. From Teresa. I loved you in Les Miserables. What are your thoughts on the movie? Oh my god, I'm so excited. <laughs> I really am. I think the preview looks unbelievable. Oh, me too. And that show, like, we saw that show growing up in Detroit a lot, a lot of times. So getting to actually be in that show at some point was so amazing, and the fact that now it's going to be this like even grander, more sort of epic telling of it, mm -hmm. I'm really excited for. I also remember, I think, the most angry I've ever seen you be was when our parents washed your Les Mis. She had a Les Mis sweatshirt that she wore everywhere, like all of our- It was gray. It, it was, was the one you, 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 were, you know it. You with, know With it. the orphan. <laughs> um, and somebody washed it with like a red sweater and dyed it pink and you are not having any of that. Like, this is not what this is supposed to look like. Also her face was like, her little orphan face was just like, the slightest shade of pink. <laughs> and I remember our parents were like, well, now I think it's time for you to learn how to do laundry. That is exactly and what happened. And then you did your own Everything laundry. Everything is a teaching lesson. You don't like the way we do your laundry, you can do your own laundry. Cut to like our mom dropping in a red sock and being like, this will teach her. <laughs> Yup, I did wear a lot of red socks growing yep. up. Sure. This is from Lee. Would you ever write a Keenan Bolger family tell-all? <laughs> what would you call it? Oh, I love it. Absolutely, I would love to write that. Um, what would I call it? Um, crunchy munchkin kids who live in a boot or something. I don't know. <laughs> Thank you for the live in a boot part. Yes, we live in a boot. I think is that Wait, say used it to again. Say that? Crunchy, hippie. Children, munchkins. Who <laughs> live in a boot. Who live in a boot. They're like little nursery people. <laughs> yes, right? I think that's really sure. good. Thank you so much for your questions. Yes, that was really, really fun. Hopefully you learned some things. I know I did. It's so rude. Oh my <laughs> Be sure to come check out Celia and Peter and the Starcatcher on Broadway. And Andrew and Newsies at the Nederlander Theater running until 2024. <laughs> Hi. See ya.